problem 12.1 is identifying relevant costs and this is of course learning objective number one. The management of Bohm and the Graf, a Danish furniture manufacturer, must determine whether certain costs are relevant in two different cases. And we'll do each of the cases independently here. So let's have a look at case one. The company chronically runs at capacity and the old model uh, A3, A3000 machine is the company's constraint. Management is considering purchasing a new model B3800 machine to use in addition to the A3000. The old A3000 uh, would continue to be used to capacity as before, the new B3800 being used to expand production. The increase in volume would be large enough to require increases in fixed selling expenses and in general administrative overhead, but not in the general fixed manufacturing overhead. What is required? Place an X in the appropriate column to indicate whether each item is relevant or not relevant to each of the two cases. Consider the two cases independently. Okay, well, so I've replicated the, uh, the, the different costs on the screen here. And you'll see that I have uh, listed case one and case two. So one of the things that we want to do for uh, irrelevant costs is quite simple. Um, costs, remember, now those are costs that are, have either already been incurred or will not differ among the alternatives. So why don't we just eliminate those first? That would be the, uh, the straightforward way to do it. And whenever you have to classify costs, sometimes you may not know if they're relevant or irrelevant, but the first step you should do is say, okay, you know what, all sunk costs, I'm going to ignore them, and all costs that would be the same under each alternative, I'm going to ignore. So let's see if we can uh, find some of those. We are told that this new machine is going to be added on top of the existing machine. So the existing machine is not going anywhere. So as far as the book value of the old machine, the model A3000, it's sunk, it's irrelevant. Disposal value, well, we're not disposing of it, it's irrelevant. Anything to do with the 3000 machine we can ignore. Why? Because we're keeping it under both situations. If we don't get the new machine, we have the old A3000. If we get the new machine, we have the old A3000. So they're either sunk or will be the same under both situations. So we can pretty much ignore those costs. Anything else that we can ignore here? It says here, the increase in volume uh, will increase fixed selling expenses and general administrative overhead, but not general fixed manufacturing overhead. So as far as general fixed manufacturing overhead is concerned, we're told it'll have no effect, which means those costs will be the same whether we get it or not. But while we're here, we are told that fixed selling expenses and general administrative overhead are going to change. So general administrative overhead clearly is relevant and fixed selling expense clearly is relevant. So now what do we do? We've, we've, we've taken care of what we think are all of the costs that are either sunk or will be the same under both scenarios. So we might be tempted to say, well, then everything else must be relevant. But I want you to see that it's relevant. When we add the new 3800 machine, it's going to increase volume. It's going to increase production and increase sales. So that means we're going to have incremental benefits or differential benefits and differential costs. Well, we have, we have to think about this for a minute. We don't have just in, in, incremental contribution margin. We have, we have sales revenue, direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead. Are they all relevant? Well, if we're going to increase production even by one unit, we're going to increase sales by one unit. That means we're going to increase all the expenses associated with that by one unit. So all our variables will increase. And there's our variable selling expense as well. well what about buying the unit? Well, if we don't buy it, we don't have to pay for it, right? So it is a differential cost. So have a look down that list and make sure you agree with all those entries. If we buy this new unit and keep the old one, 
I think you can see that everything that deals with E, F, G, and H are probably correct. A, B, C, and D, all of the variable costs and the sales revenue. Well, uh, it says specifically that the increase in sales volume will increase fixed selling and general administrative. So we got fixed selling and general administrative, but we also have to uh, think that, well, our sales volume is going to increase. There will be an incremental increase. Uh, and uh, if, if one unit extra is sold, all the variable costs with that will also be incurred. So there we go. Let's have a look at what case two is asking us to do. Case two, the old model A3000 machine is not of the company's constraint, but management is considering replacing it with the new B3800. So now it's not just in addition to, it's replacing. Uh, replacing it with the new model because of the potential savings in direct materials cost with the new machine. The model A3000 machine would be sold. This change would have no effect on production or sales other than some savings in direct materials due to less waste. All right, well, let's have a look at that. If it's not going to change sales, sales are not relevant. Sales will be the same under both scenarios. So what we're doing right now, always start this way. Always start with, well, what are the sunk costs that I can simply ignore? And what are the costs that are going to stay the same under both scenarios? So we're really just looking for our not relevant costs. Direct materials. Well, we're told that they are going to change. So we'll put that in right now. If sales revenue is not going to change and production is not going to change, our direct labor is probably not going to change, our variable manufacturing overhead is not going to change, uh, what about the book value for the A3000 machine? Well, the book value is a sunk cost. What does it matter now? It doesn't matter what we paid for it. It's a sunk cost, remember? Disposal value of the A3000. Well, we're told that it, we're going to sell it. So if we get the new machine, the sales proceeds from the old machine are relevant. If we don't get the new machine, um, then they continue on. So they're different under both scenarios, so disposal value. Depreciation for the A3000 machine. Uh, well, we're getting rid of it, which means you're not going to have the depreciation charge going forward. We're going to have to consider that. The market value for the B3800 machine, if we buy it, we have to consider it. It is differential. Fixed manufacturing overhead. Um, if it's not going to change production, then that is irrelevant. It'll, it will we'll incur that cost under both scenarios, right? Variable selling expense. We're told that nothing's going to change other than just some savings on material. The production and sales volume are not going to change, so anything variable is not going to change. Fixed selling expense, that is irrelevant. It'll be the same under both scenarios. General administrative overhead will be the same under both scenarios. So just to recap, how we started this is we said, well, let's look for all the sunk costs. They don't matter. Anything that we already paid for, anything we've already paid for, doesn't matter. And then we looked for all costs that would be the same under both scenarios. Any cost that is the same under both scenarios is irrelevant as well. And I always follow the logic that once I go through the list and I decide that something is not relevant, everything else must, by default, be relevant. There's 12.1. Exercise 12.2. We're looking at dropping or retaining a segment. Learning Objective 2. Cumberland County Senior Services is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing essential services to seniors who live in their own homes within the Cumberland County area. Three services are provided for seniors, home nursing, meals on wheels, and housekeeping. And you can see on the screen on the spreadsheet, I've replicated the data that's in the uh, book. We can see the column for home nursing, the column for meals on wheels, and the column for housekeeping. And it's fairly obvious from this presentation that they're trying to show us that housekeeping is a drain. Housekeeping has negative $40,000 in operating income. Let's keep reading, see what our problem is. In the home nursing program, nurses visit seniors on a regular basis to check on their general health and to perform tests ordered by their physicians. Meals on Wheel program delivers a hot meal once a day to each senior enrolled in the program. The housekeeping service provides weekly house cleaning and maintenance service. 
the head administrator of Cumberland County Services, uh, uh, Judith uh, Ewa, is concerned about the organization's finances and considers the operating income of $5,000 last year to be razor thin. Last year's results were very similar to the results for previous years and are representative of what would be expected in the future. She feels that the organization should be building its financial reserves at a more rapid rate in order to prepare for the next inevitable recession. After seeing the above report, Iwa asks for more information about the financial advisability of discontinuing the housekeeping program. So what do we know about that? Number one, the depreciation in the housekeeping category is for a small van that is used to carry the housekeepers and their equipment from job to job. If the program were discontinued, the van would be donated to a charitable organization. Depreciation charges assume zero salvage value. So that's the same as selling it. If we have zero salvage value, um, then that's the same as selling it, giving it away, right? None of the general administrative overhead would be avoided if the housekeeping program were dropped, but the liability insurance and the salary of the program administrator would be avoided. Should the housekeeping program be discontinued? Explain and show computations to support your answer. Well, what we're doing is we're just uh, uh, trying to figure out if we should get rid of housekeeping, so we're going to uh, look at lost benefits and, uh, uh, and um, expenses that will be saved. So right away we're going to lose a contribution margin of $80,000. Our revenues are two hundred forty. our variable expenses are one sixty. dollars It's contributing $80,000 uh, towards uh, our, our, uh, our expenses. So let's put a negative 80,000 in here because we're going to lose that. But what expenses are we going to save? I want to do depreciation last. Let's just keep moving on. Liability insurance. We're told that we will save liability insurance. That's specific to this uh, to, to housekeeping. Uh, we're also told that we will save the program administrator salary of $37,000. And we're told for the general administrative overhead, there's nothing we can do about that. Nothing we can do about that at all. So we're losing 80, but we're saving 52 so far. We've got to deal with this depreciation. If we no longer have the van on the books, if we give it away and the van is no longer on the books, there is no need to incur that $20,000 depreciation. So we can get rid of that $20,000 and look at this, net income lost or gained, we see that um, $8,000. So we're contributing $80,000. We're going to lose that $80,000 contribution margin, but we're going to save $72,000, which makes us $8,000 worse off. So getting rid of housekeeping isn't such a bright idea. So let's look at the second part of this question, because it's a, a two-parter recast the above data in a format that would be more useful to management in assessing the long-run financial viability of the various services. And if you've done Chapter 11, you were probably looking at the original contribution format income statement in this question saying, well, why, why are you doing it this way? Why are we uh, taking our general administrative overhead, which is an allocated common cost, and, and putting it in, in with housekeeping? Uh, why don't we separate out, separate the costs out in terms of traceable and common? And we wouldn't have had to go through this exercise. Well, here's what we do. Uh, we're going to do it now. Uh, so here is our revenues, our variable expenses, and our contribution margin. From that, we're going to deduct our traceable fixed expenses. And you see that I have uh, depreciation uh, is, is left out. So let's put our depreciation in because uh, we're, we're not assuming now that we're dropping it, uh, we're putting it back in uh, because we're making the assumption that, well, let's just rewrite the statements to see what we get. So there's our depreciation, which we know is traceable to housekeeping because it does disappear. We know that liability insurance is traceable to housekeeping. We're already told that. And the program administrator salary is traceable. So we have to total traceable fixed expenses of 72 so that housekeeping has a positive segment margin of $8,000. Uh, 
Uh, Meals on Wheels has uh, uh, got a contribution, a segment margin of 105. And uh, Home Nursing has a segment margin of 72,000. So we have total segment margin of 185, less our common fixed expenses, which would not go away if we got rid of housekeeping of 180, thereby giving us an operating income of 5,000. We drop housekeeping, we can see right away, look, we'll lose the 8,000. We'll lose a segment margin of $8,000 right away. So by using this powerful statement, and this powerful format we learned in chapter 11, we can avoid difficult questions like, look, housekeeping looks like it's losing money. Should we get rid of it? Well, if you just, all, if you already prepare your statements in a format that answers that question, you never have to ask it. It is positive. It is contributing towards our general administrative overhead. So our, uh, our leader here is going to have to look for uh, savings somewhere else. Thank you.